All right. Hey everybody, how's everyone doing this morning? Awake? All right. Uh, so my name is Nate Ani. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Nate A. Um, and my talk is uh, Open edX and Docker. And why you might be interested in this topic is if you're interested in low-cost hosting, shareable edX distros, and easier development environments. <laughs> So uh, a little bit about me. Um, for a long time, I worked with organizations um, to help them with their content management challenges. And I was heavily involved in the Plone community. Some of you may have heard of. Uh, it's a popular open source Python-based CMS. Um, and nowadays, I'm, I'm working with organizations in their online learning initiatives. Um, and I'm doing a lot more with Open edX. Um, so when I was doing the research for this report, making Open edX a thriving open source project, I interviewed a lot of people about open edX. And I started to see some patterns emerge. And it really got me thinking about the spirit of open source. And Beth touched on this yesterday uh, when she said that open source is a gift. And let me share an example in another thing we all like to do, eat. So let's say that your friend, uh, OK, let's say his name is Ned, uh, has invited you over for a fine sushi dinner. Uh, and when you arrive at his house, the table is set. The candles are lit, and when you sit down at the table, there's an amazing sushi meal, all prepared for you to enjoy. What you probably didn't realize is that for the last three hours before you arrived, Ned was slaving away, preparing that meal for you. And he had to pull together a lot of ingredients in just the right quantities to make the sushi just right. And after dinner, you said to Ned, that sushi meal was so amazing. Could I get the recipe so I can make it at home? Sure. But he adds with a wink and a nod, if you make any improvements to the recipe, I want to hear about it. Well, open edX is kind of like that fine sushi dinner, isn't it? It's a gift, but it's one that has some strings attached. It comes with a contract with explicit instructions to share. But it's not always easy to share your improvements. While we'd all like to think that open edX comes to us like this, when we open it up, it looks a little bit more like this. So does this look familiar? The fundamental question that I couldn't get out of my head last night is this. If open source is all about sharing, how come it's so hard to share my improvements to open edX? So if I take Ned's sushi recipe and I make a super sushi, can't I just package up my super sushi and deliver it to you as a sushi kit? So instead of you know, the raw sushi ingredients, um, that would mean more people could enjoy my delicious sushi. Um, so I apologize if this is making some of you hungry. I promise no more sushi slides. <clears throat> so OpenEdX is a complicated system with a lot of moving parts. What if you could package up all these moving parts essentially snapshot your working edX site with all of your improvements, and then share that package with someone, let's say in Japan, just as easily as sharing it with your coworker. So this is where Docker comes in. Docker is essentially a way to snapshot your software and redistribute it. But here's what makes it different. It's not just the code that you're snapshotting, it's the entire application, including all the libraries and all the components that edX depends on. So you might say, but Nate, we already have virtual machines that I can spin up using Vagrant. So why do we need Docker? Well, Docker containers consume less resources and they're faster. While VMs consume a lot of memory on your machine and take a while to start up, Docker containers are very lightweight and spin up in seconds. So you're all familiar with these shipping containers, right? On those big ships that go across the ocean. You can think of Docker as a shipping container system for code. So the container is a standard format. You can ship things anywhere in the world, and they'll just arrive. You can put anything in a, sh in, in a shipping container. The same is true for Docker containers. And they run consistently on virtually any hardware platform. So let's, let's walk through an example to make this a little bit more concrete how it works. So in the last year, we've built all these different enhancements to edX for different customers. Let's say that I wanted to share all these enhancements with you. I could send you the GitHub URLs. I could send you a long list of documentation 
to read, or I could just package all this up as a Docker image. Um, so this is similar to an AMI if you've, if you've used Amazon um, Web Services. So I could give you my super open edX. And if you're a developer, you could hit the ground running with a fully operational distribution of my, my open edX site. And if you're a company, you can distribute this image to your customers, and they can run it anywhere. Amazon AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, OpenStack, they all support Docker now, just in the last month or so. So the great thing about Docker images is that I can pull down your Docker image and make a few changes to it, and then I can push back my changes, and it only has to save the diff between those changes, not the entire image. So what GitHub is to Git, so is the Docker registry hub to Docker. So here's an example of a Docker registry hub listing for my company, AppSembler. And you can see that we pushed a Docker image called edX Lite. This is the latest Aspen released. Uh, it was updated yesterday. So if you had Docker running on your computer right now, you could just run these two commands, and you'd have edX running on your machine in a couple of minutes. edX Lite is a pre-built image that's ready to provi it's already provisioned, and it's ready to use. You can think of it like an appliance. No assembly is required. Um, and Boot to Docker is a point-and-click installer for Mac and Windows um, that makes it drop-dead simple to get Docker running on your computer. But we wanted to make it so easy to try OpenEdX that you don't even need to install anything on your computer. We wanted to make the Steve Jobs equivalent user experience for someone totally new to OpenEdX who doesn't want to mess with AMIs, Vagrant, Ansible, uh, and all, all the other things you know about. Um, so Docker makes this a lot easier. Okay, so I want to try a little experiment. I want you all to take out your mobile phones and go to this URL. And there's a QR code for those of you with fat fingers. Um, and I'll warn you, we haven't tested this with 50 people all at once, but let's try it. Everyone have the URL? bit.ly.com slash tryopenedx. Everyone got it? Okay, if you don't want to do it now, you can do it later. It's, uh, the URL will stay up. Okay, um, so if you were to bring up that page on your phone, you should see something like this. This is a simple form in which we ask you for your email so we can send you the URL to your OpenEdX site. Don't worry, we won't spam you. And if the demo gods are smiling on us, you should see a deploy complete message and a URL to view your own OpenEdX site. And this whole process takes 30 seconds. It probably takes you longer to type in that email address than it does to deploy OpenEdX. Okay, did it work for anyone? I see one hand. I see two hands. Okay, great. So the promise of Docker is that you can just take any app and you can deploy it to any hosting provider on any operating system. So imagine a world in which this is not true just for OpenEdX itself, but a variety of OpenEdX distributions that are for different audiences, OpenEdX for businesses, OpenEdX for K through 12, uh, OpenEdX for learning to code, uh, OpenEdX for Swahili, people who speak Swahili. Together, we can make this a reality for OpenEdX. There's been a lot of talk about letting a thousand flowers blossom, but seeds need to be planted, nurtured, and watered before they blossom into beautiful flowers. Docker provides a fertile ground. It's great that we're sharing our code on GitHub, but let's not only share the seeds, but let's share the flowers too. Thank you. Um, and I just want to mention that we're also doing, um, at the hackathon, we're going to be Dockerizing OpenEdX. We already have a single container. We're going to be making a multi-container one. So if you're interested in learning more about Docker, uh, we'd love to see you at the hackathon. And if you didn't get a chance to try the demo, you can go to openedx.appsembler.com and you can uh, get a free, a free OpenEdX site to try out. Thanks a lot, everybody.